Hello chemistry students. Today we're going to run the reactions that are a part of the chemical reactions lab, also known as you're just my type. So first I want you to notice that I've done my goggles and I've done my apron and now that I have all my safety equipment on, I'm ready to start. So reaction number one says light your Bunsen burner. And if you take a look at the setup that I have here, here is the gas jet. It's got a hose connected to my Bunsen burner. And I'm able to adjust the amount of oxygen uh, that gets mixed with the gas that comes through the tube um, by turning this little um, gadget here at the very bottom. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my gas jet so that it's parallel to the nozzle. That means that I'm getting the maximum amount of gas out of there. I'm gonna let it run for a moment and then I'm gonna go ahead and light it. So now I've got methane mixing with oxygen and I'm going to add some energy. Maybe I have too much oxygen. And there we are. Oops, and I just blew it out. <laughs> But anyway, there we are, lighting the Bunsen burner. This is reaction number one. All right, for reaction number two, I'm supposed to fill a small test tube with some silver nitrate solution. That's what I've done here. and. I've twisted um, a copper wire. It's supposed to be a spring, but that was the best that I, that I could do. And now I'm going to drop it into my test tube, which uh, has now gotten stuck in there. There we go. All right. So there is my copper inside of the test tube. And um, we're going to come back and take a look at that in a few minutes. So again, this is reaction two, and we'll come back and, and take a look at that in a little bit. All right, for reaction three, we are to put 10 drops of lead nitrate into a small test tube. So here's my test tube, and here is my lead nitrate. And then I'm supposed to add 10 drops of potassium iodide. So let me do that. Next. I got about eight drops in there. Nine, ten. All right, now being careful to not touch the nozzle of my bottle, put ten drops of potassium iodide. There we go. And there is your result. And I just want you to really take a look at what's going on there. You can kind of see that you have some liquid at the top, like towards the top level of the fluid. And then you have a little bit of a solid at the bottom. Okay. That's reaction number three. All right, next we have reaction number four, and it says to obtain a large dry, t a large test tube, which I have right here, uh, and I put a scoopful of baking soda into the test tube. Um, the first thing that it's asking me to do is to weigh it. So I've got my balance here, and let's weigh this all out. And there is my result, 21.36 grams. Now the directions say that I am to use a wire test tube holder. Let's put this in a clamp. And I need to light my Bunsen burner. Hopefully it'll work. And I need to heat my test tube full of baking soda. 
Okay, so as you can see, I've got my Bunsen burner lit and I'm gonna aim my test tube mouth away from people. And we're just gonna heat this up for a little bit. We're still heating. And I'm going to try and bring this in a little closer, but you can kind of see what's happening towards the top of my tube here. It's starting to get a little bit foggy. I've got some droplets of water that are forming and so you can see I'm still heating and now what I'm going to do is light a wood splint. I'm going to put it into the mouth of my test tube and the splint went out. Now what I want you to think about is what is being produced from the from uh, the heating of this baking soda that would cause a flame to go out instead of grow. Think about that. All right, folks. So I'm done heating, and I am weighing my baking soda heat that's been heated up in the tube, and you can see that I now have a different mass. 20.63. Is that less? Is that more? Why would that change? That's the question. Okay, so before we move on to reaction five, I wanted to go back to reaction two. Um, I just glanced at the test tube that we, where we put the coil of copper into the silver nitrate, and I just wanted you to see what's happening to it. Look at that. Try and focus that a little bit. But can you see what's happening to our copper wire? what's forming around it. It's kind of glittery. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble like focusing it for you, but that's it. This, so this is from reaction two. Okay, we are on to reaction five. I've got my safety goggles on, and the first thing I'm supposed to do is fill a large test tube about a third of the way with three molar hydrochloric acid, and so that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm probably not gonna do a third, but I'll do enough so that when I drop my magnesium metal, into the hydrochloric acid that it's at least covered. Okay, I think we're gonna stop there. And I'm gonna use my test tube holders to kind of put this up to the thing for you to see and um, there we go that might be better all right so here we go I'm just gonna drop this in and right away you can see so that is reaction five okay for reaction six I'm going to take a wood splint and put it into the mouth of this tube. So as you can see, I've got some wisps of gas being, being made. Ooh, 
and there we go. So was that the same reaction that we got when I put the wood splint into the uh, baking, the test tube with baking soda? No, I didn't get a, a whistle like that. That whistle came from this. So um, anyway, that was something a little bit different. Uh, so the reaction in question here is with the gas and the oxygen that is being drawn in by the flame. So the gas that's being produced in the test tube and the oxygen. So that's the reaction that you, you just witnessed. All right, and for our last reaction, we are on reaction number seven. I took a small test tube, I filled it with some dextrose, and now I'm using my test tube holder to heat it up. Um, take a look at what happens. Now, I think a lot of students think that whenever you light a Bunsen burner, it's automatically a combustion reaction. But we're not really reacting the gas or the oxygen with anything. Do you guys see what's happening here in my test tube? And you can see what I have inside of the test tube. All right, that's it for the reactions for this lab. And um, go ahead and fill in your data tables. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, chemistry students.